Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. Welcome to this week's supply and demand for us and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new, a warm welcome to you. And if you're returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video with your fellow trading colleagues as it helps uh, support the channel and uh, really promotes the channel and is a free way uh, to get the uh, information out there to those people. Uh, uh, traders that really uh, need it and want to apply uh, fundamentals to technicals right and it's not necessarily uh, diametrically opposed one or the other you know, we're using the best of uh, both um, uh, disciplines to make the best trading decisions so looking at the uh, week ahead and uh, if you go to tradingeconomics.com uh, you'll see this one of the um, <coughs> one of the uh, tabs if you go to the home page, you'll see week ahead. Click on it and you'll get this page. So um, I'll go over the, um, I guess the most, the majority of this, which is um, pretty much uh, next week. All eyes will be on the uh, non-farm payroll report, which is expected to show the American economy created 250,000 jobs in July. So the least since a decline in December of 2020 and a sign that hiring may be cooling down. And um, in fact, I think the Federal Reserve, in fact, I say I think, but I know the Federal Reserve actually uh, do want... Um, uh, unemployment yeah the unemployment rate actually uh, to increase uh, because unemployment um, and employment actually has an effect there is a correlation between employment and um, inflation so um, they need inflation in order for inflation to come down they actually need um, employment unemployment to go higher so um, let's see if that happens but uh, unemployment rate is seen at stable at 3.6% um, and um, remaining the lowest since February 2020, while wages uh, growth is set to slow down slightly. And again, that will hopefully help um, the banks, uh, you know, inflation to come down and maybe reach their 2% target. I don't think they'll, they'll achieve it, but let's see. Um, traders will also keep a close eye on appearances from several Federal, federal, um, federal Reserve officials for further hints on the size of the Fed September rate hike, and that's always important. <clears throat> and then it talks about earnings. I'm not really concerned about that. So other important economic data include S&P Global PMIs, ISA Manufacturing and Non-Manufacturing PMIs, Exports, Imports, Challenger Jobs, job uh, cuts, construction spending, jolts, uh, job openings and factory orders. So elsewhere in America, it'll be interesting to follow Canada's PMIs, uh, trade balance and unemployment figures. Um, so in the UK, the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee will go ahead with another increase in borrowing costs with markets split between a 25 basis points and a 50 basis point hike. Um, the consensus from what I've read is that <clears throat> uh, they, the Bank of England uh, and the market expects the Bank of England to hike by 50 basis points. So the Bank of England faces a difficult balancing act, like all central banks at the moment, um, in the choice between how much monetary policy should be tightened in order to contain inflation rapidly approaching the two digits while preventing the downturn from becoming too steep. Because if they hike too aggressively, um, uh, uh, hiking interest rates can... Um, uh, uh, make the economy contract because you're increasing borrowing and lending costs and it has an effect on business activity which then has an effect on uh, GDP right so consumer prices rose 9.4% uh, year on year in July the most since 1992 on the economic data front <clears throat> investors await final PMIs alongside nationwide housing prices and Halifax um, house price index not really you know bothered about that Elsewhere in Europe, retail trade growth in the euro area likely slowed at the end of the second quarter, particularly in Germany, and industrial production is seen falling in Germany, France and Italy. Meanwhile, the eurozone unemployment rate is set to remain unchanged at a record low of 6.6%. Other data to follow include euro area production inflation and Germany uh, balance of trade and factory orders. Um, Switzerland inflation data is coming out, which will be interesting. Uh, consumer confidence and manufacturing PMIs, and that's pretty much it, uh, GB. PMIs for the euro area, Germany and France, okay? And then in China, the spotlight will be on July PMI reading to assess um, <clears throat> to assess on the pace of 
the post lockdown recovery of the manufacturing and services sectors and that's important really um, with risk sentiment if China is seen growing then um, what you will you know should see is um, I guess uh, an avoidance of a, a global economic uh, contraction and um, so yeah will need if, if, if you're buying especially if you're buying commodity currencies like the Australian dollar Canadian dollar or New Zealand dollar uh, you really want to see um, the uh, 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 China um, economy grow and so with the current account for the second quarter also being released and the current account is basically um, whether um, the uh, country is in a surplus or a deficit trade balance. So in Australia, the focus will be on the central bank's interest rate decision following a slightly softer increase in their headline inflation rate last quarter, which has strengthened bets for a 50 basis point hike. And I think the um, uh, they wanted a 75 basis point hike, but um, because inflation came out um, a, bit, a bit lower than expected, um, the bank will probably start to hike at 50 basis points and in neighbouring New Zealand the second quarter job data is expected to show a tightening of labour market with the jobless rate seen moving lower in a fresh all-time low of 3.1% and employment expected to rise by 0.4% so um, on the jobs data I think around the world lots of uh, good employment but it adds to um, inflation if you want inflation uh, to come down then you actually need employment and unemployment to go the other way so um let's uh, look at the technicals and some more fundamentals on the majors so uh starting off on the uh dollar index in fact go to the dollar index and yep the dollar is obviously selling off and this is due to um really disappointing data and there was a lot of um talk obviously about the uh, you know being in a technical recession if you're on social media which you know everyone else I say everyone else but everyone is nowadays um, you you would have read that you know the US um, has entered the you know into into a recession and is a technical recession now um, you know the the, the headlines though um, although they mention a recession and uh, what a technical recession is which is two negative quarters of uh, of of growth. Um, I, 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 the, the banks, are, I don't think the, the majority of the banks are seeing it that way. And I'm going to basically uh, show you, you know, why. And because um, there are, um, there is a, um, a bureau, I think it's called the National Bureau of Economic Research, NEBR, that actually defines um, and calls whether the economy is in the recession in the US. Now, um, you know, you'll see, for example, the narrative that says the drumbeat of a recession grew louder after the US economy shrank for a second straight quarter. You know, it doesn't say that, you know, the, 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 the language doesn't say that, you know, we're actually in a recession. Uh, I say we, but the US is in, is in a recession. It just says the drumbeat of a recession grew louder. So, you know, you might be scratching your head, right, as, as to the reasons why. And um, in a report from uh, Wells Fargo, um, a special commentary uh, which <clears throat> um, I was reading to the guys in the um, in the private members group, and I said this uh, on the day on just before, in fact, the um, the the release of the data. And basically, I was saying that um, even if the economy um, does go into a technical recession and goes into negative growth, um, what you should really be aware of is how the market. Uh, takes it. It's not about your opinions on what you know uh, a recession is. And yes, we do know what a technical recession is, but it's what's more important is what how the smart money interprets the data. That's the difference. It's not about you know someone on um, on on YouTube or Twitter or TikTok, you know, trying to get you to sell the dollar, um, you know, because in fact it's really what the smart money are doing and how they're interpreting the data and um wells fargo and i and i believe that a lot of um banks are looking at it in in the same way and you can read it in the language of uh if you go to you know bloomberg etc and just not just bloomberg but other financial reports and um and websites 
is um, it's basically they are waiting for the NEBR, the National Bureau, uh, NBER, sorry, National Bureau of Economic Research, as to say, um, um, to actually declare a recession. So I'll read the summary uh, for you guys. And the summary is even if GDP posted, this was basically, this was reported just before the, um, the, um, the negative growth right so they're saying that even if the gdp posted back-to-back -back declines the economy is not yet in a recession though we suspect it will be within six months so because defining some something as important as a recession is more than mere semantics this report unpacks the right variables to watch and introduces a new at a glance tool to get the next recession call right so while everyone else you know in in, in the social media is running around like a headless chicken talking about recession 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 the smart money who have got you know deep pockets and who are placing bigger bets than all the retail traders um are doing something different right they're looking at um, different data so uh, Wells Fargo expect the economy expanded, right? So they were actually a bit a, a bit wrong on this, but they said that, the, um, but the data print on Thursday, the growth rate could very well come in negative. So they were aware that it could have come in negative and it did. So two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth is one working definition of a recession, but it's not the official one. Um, so the US uh, uh, definitive, sorry, the definitive US recession call is up to the National Bureau of Economic Research, whose business cycle dating committee determines the start and end dates for each economic cycle. So that's who determines whether um, you know the economy is in the recession or not. The committee considers a recession to involve a significant decline in economic activity that is spread across the economy and lasts more than a few months. Yeah, in quotations. So the committee relies on six variables of monthly product, um, a monthly activity when dating uh, an economic cycle, which fall into four primary categories, which is production, income, employment, and spending, or what we refer to as pies. In short, we do not think the economy is in a recession at present, but if our forecast is correct, this is not so much of a uh, of a head fake as it is a harbinger of worse to come as we are forecasting the economy to enter a mild recession uh, early next year. So, and the report goes into, um, you know, their, uh, their thoughts on obviously, you know, what they refer to as pies. So, um, Again, it's really about what the smart money think, you know, smart money concepts are not, you know, anything you see technically smart money, smart money are literally looking at the fundamentals and risk sentiment side of things. So uh, with that being said, going back to really the charts, um, my bias in the short term would be obviously um, probably look for some sort of dollar uh, downside, but I think overall, I do think the dollar is still a potential buy, but it does depend on the data because the Federal Reserve is still looking to hike rates. They haven't taken taken uh, rate hikes off the table, so I do think that the dollar um, is a potential buy in the medium to long term. I think there are uh, economies um, again in in the short term, probably the euro and the pound are may fare better, but it's only really because of the fact that the dollar isn't doing great on on short term sentiment but my you know focus is more on medium to long term um value and i do believe that the dollar is still a potential buyer there'd be buying opportunities of course you know if you're looking at short term trades then you will be looking at you know short short trades um so pullbacks into any um supply zones of course you're not really trading the dollar index but you're looking at um, supply zones on dollar crosses like the dollar yen or dollar Swiss if you want to take advantage of some dollar weakness. But I would probably personally, and again, it's not financial advice, um, just what I'm really doing. And I'm looking for more um, uh, buying opportunities and just waiting and being patient. Um, because although, again, like I said, the dollar is might be a bit weak in the short term, um, doesn't mean that everything else is faring a whole lot better. And we'll get into into that as well so um let's oh and also as well my view is backed up by 
um, a bank, uh, MUFG Bank. And again, this bank analysis is um, some of the stuff that we look at as confluence um, with our trading in uh, trading 180. It's not just me making you know stuff up in my head. You know, I always look for um, smart money to uh, confirm uh, my biases, right? And um, and so this is MUFG, and uh, they are a very big. Uh, uh, Bank, I think a Japanese bank, and uh, they pretty much say the same thing. So I'll read this out as well. So in uh, in these circumstances, the U.S. dollar has clearly lost some of its shine in recent weeks. The pullback for the U.S. yield and tentative improvement in global uh, investor risk sentiment have both weighed on the U.S. dollar alongside intensified U.S. recession risk. It leaves the dollar vulnerable to further near-term weakness. Right, it's a near-term weakness. However. We are still not convinced that the broad-based US dollar sell-off will be sustained beyond the near term. So near term can be anywhere between, you know, a week to maybe two or three weeks, right? Um, but it's not necessarily a reversal. Um, so the Fed's policy shift is not sufficiently dovish enough, which is which when combined with global uh, slowdown recession fears that are set to intensify further, we believe the recent correction lower in the dollar is likely to prove temporary. One exception is the dollar yen, where we are more confident that the dollar could have already peaked against the uh, the, the the yen, which basically they're saying that there's putting more you know potential downside on the dollar yen than there is you know any other currency. But um, again, I think uh, again a little uh, summary here as well. It says global growth fears to remain supportive for the dollar fed policy pivot not yet sufficiently dovish more confident though on the dollar uh, that the dollar yen has peaked so um although we're seeing a weakness in the dollar um it's uh, for me it's not an outright uh, sell um i'm still looking to buy although again uh, you know you do what you want with uh, with the information that i provide and the information that you do your research on right uh, so i'm just looking for pullbacks into demand zones as confluence on the dollar index anyways let's get on to uh, the dollar yen so dollar yen is coming down to actually quite a nice uh, fresh area of demand uh, the 132 round number i do like that for a potential buy uh, and there are some um some more zones just below that as well uh, which is decent here we are oh, so i'll just put that there um obviously you know there was no demand really at the uh, 135s so but i do think this area it's 132 or just the 13150 area towards the bottom of that demand zone is nice you also have um some uh uh, past support and resistance in that area so looking for a potential buy trade in and around that 131 uh, well for pretty much from around now to the to the absolute lows I would say of that demand zone if it does present itself um, moving on actually yeah, in fact if you do want to be a buyer of the uh, the yen then you have some decent supply zones technically to look for uh, some short trades as well so you're looking for a pullback to come all the way up to uh up to here before looking at getting short uh dollar swiss dollar swiss pretty um yeah i think that level is right there if you're looking at that as a demand zone that level there is a demand zone then yeah we get a bit of a pullback i'm not really looking to buy this currency pair simply because the swiss franc are also looking to high crates the japanese yen and the bank of japan is still actually quite dovish on the um on the on, on the japanese yen um so with the federal reserve still looking to hike i do think that the dollar yen is a is a is a, is a buy whereas the dollar swiss um i'm not so sure on the on where the value would possibly be i mean i know technically but i just want to stay out of anything that's not too clear so um if you are to be a buyer of the dollar then the, these two demand zones is where you're probably looking for any kind of buy opportunities if you're looking for a sell trade meaning that you think that that the uh, swiss franc is you know cheap or a bit of a bargain then the one the, sorry the 0 0.96 area is where you're looking for short trades uh dollar cad dollar cad again with the um dollar not doing so well you're seeing these demand zones not really holding up um and we are making lower highs and lower lows so 
Um, you know, we've had we've got that supply zone there. Um, nearest demand zone for the dollar, if you're looking to buy, is going to be all the way down at these lows here. So um, for now, it's either that or if prices this week do suddenly, you know, start to prove that there's demand where we are currently and then a pullback into that, that would be, you know, some decent demand uh, potentially for the US dollar. But um, again, not really a pair that I'm, I'm that interested in unless, in fact, here's another thing. Uh, to think about if you know risk sentiment does come you know back on um and oil starts to obviously um increase there is demand out of the china that uh, starts to increase then uh commodity currencies like the uh, canadian dollar should do well and in fact if it, if it does then you would see you know further downside uh looking at the new zealand dollar us dollar so pretty much all currencies are uh um, at the moment with dollar weakness uh, improving um, in a risk off environment you would expect the US dollar to continue to strengthen so we could see prices either start reversing from now uh, and really up into these uh, 64 area um, but if there is risk on if we do have some risk on again some good news out of China then you're starting to see now some demand zones take shape um, I'm not going to hesitate to put anything there. So if you do see any uh, pullbacks into this zone or into these zones, then that is actually a decent um, long trade uh, for the for the New Zealand dollar. We might have seen a bit of a bottom in that New Zealand dollar. Um, moving on to the uh, dollar uh, pound dollar and um, the pound dollar, you know, um, is for me still a sell. Now, it might not seem the best uh, trade at the moment, but I do think if prices, I think the upside is, is, is capped. I do think the upside is capped. The reason why, uh, one of the reasons why is because um, I think the UK economy at some point is, is, you know, is quite bad as well. And the UK probably already in a recession. So former Bank of England rate setter says, so Blanche Flower urges Bank of England to refrain from further rate increases. And uh, the central bank uh, set to deliver first half point raise since 1995. So the UK economy has probably tipped into a recession and the Bank of England should hold off from further rate uh, increases, a former policymaker at the central bank said. So Danny Blanche Flower, who served on the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee from 2006 to 2009 uh, through the global financial crisis, said the UK would probably follow other major economies into recession that um, and that unemployment is a bigger threat. So the UK, in all likelihood, is already in a recession, Blanche Flower said in an interview on BBC Radio 4's Today programme on Thursday. The right thing to do is to sit back and wait and watch as the global recession probably spreads. So um, the UK did get, in fact, um, you know, some positive news on a, from a month on month perspective um, uh, when it comes to uh, GDP. But um, I think the data is 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 um, is lagging a little bit. I say a little bit, but the data generally lags. And um, even though that was a surprise, there are a lot more risks um, when it comes to uh, the UK. Higher inflation. Um, you've got Brexit. You know, um, and energy costs as well. You know, the cost of energy uh, rising uh, rapidly as well. So I do think that if prices do start to come up to this uh, supply zone here. I'm still going to be a buyer of the uh, US dollar over the British pound, um, but let's see what happens. And there is uh, another supply zone just above here, which is actually quite decent as well. So look at the uh, supply there. But I do think that the uh, 124 area is going to be quite nice for a, uh, uh, a sell if obviously you know price um, uh, shows that it is right. So. Uh, not just going to set pending orders or anything like that it's just uh, looking for um, you know uh, um, uh, lower time frame uh, candles uh, and some other setups so um, looking at the um, Europe and Europe um, are diverging in the short term and what I mean by diverging is that um, 
where is it now? Where's my, here we go. Sorry, it was charting the, um, the global economy. And so um, while the US, you know, came out with some surprisingly, um, you know, bad news, I guess, the, you know, uh, Europe, Eurozone, uh, actually surprised to the upside. So um, the major economies diverged in the most recent quarter, underscored by a second straight decline in US gross domestic product, while results in the Eurozone shocked to the upside. So um, that was, um, you know, a, a surprise. Uh, definitely in the short term so you would really expect Europe and the and, and the euro to increase in value right it should you should want to see prices you know rise at least up to the 10450s 105s but with that being said um, there is a lot of risk um, of surrounding the euro and the euro feels the pressure just as everyone else is um, as as uh, economy tips towards recession so single currency is hanging on um, just above uh, dollar parity and one of the um, one of the uh, uh, risk events I guess surrounding uh, Europe is that the, you know it's as much of the economic gloom is centered on the disruption of Russian energy supplies to Europe which particularly threatens German uh, industry so Credit Suisse sees a 50% chance of the euro region falling into a recession in the next six months and Goldman Sachs says it's it may be already in one right so there's a lot of um, you know smart money who are saying that um, yes the data has surprised to the upside but we also have to remember that um, the data is lagging so for example we're in the third quarter but we're getting second quarter data right and in the fourth quarter we end up getting third quarter data so um, and that's what I mean by data lags but um, but yeah there's the you know the currency it says uh, the currency has become a lightning rod for the mounting pessimism about the euro area's economy it's fallen more than 10 percent uh, it's just talking about what, what what's happened but um, yeah so so basically um, it's the, the the gas crisis is really the um, the risk event that may um, continue to um, make the euro uh, devalue. So Europe energy prices keep soaring as Russia tightens supply. Right. So there's that. Um, and no, not getting onto gold just yet. But there are um, you know there are a, a, a lot of fears right around. Um, uh, you know the, the, the gas uh, taps being turned off in Europe and then that would also not just affect Europe but also the UK who are you know dependent upon um, you know from a geographical perspective and location perspective are going to be more affected by um, you know these uh, these energy hikes right so um, I do believe in the short term you may get you know a pullback uh, to some degree on the euro, euro strengthening due to short term uh, dollar weakness. But I do think overall, if you're getting to zoom in out, right, always zoom out. Um, and not to necessarily, you know, say that because the trend is down, that prices, you know, should always continue to trend down or, you know, they're likely to trend down. But fundamentally, I do think that Europe are in a better position, sorry, Europe are in a worse position, even, in, even though in the short term, um, it does seem a bit more positive. Um, for for Europe, but I do think that uh, my bias is to the downside. So what does that mean? Technically, you could make an argument for uh, supply zone. They're not the strongest supply in the world. Uh, there is a, a potential setup intraday around this 10278 to 103 areas um, intraday. Um, but if that does, if that area literally just continues to go higher, then I think I'm going to be a, a shorter. Uh, from around this 103.50s to 104.50s um, and look for some short trades but also that does depend on um, some dollar uh, dollar data as well the, um, the US economy data moving on to the uh, oh matter of fact before I move on to that in case you do want to be a buyer of the euro then it's probably best to look for any kind of pullbacks into this demand zone here so the 1005s um, area before looking at getting uh, long unless prices do make higher highs and then you're looking for a pullback into a demand zone which would probably start from around the 102s 
um, if they start to make higher highs. Um, Aussie dollar, so again, Aussie dollar, um, Australian dollar, actually doing quite decent. There are they are hiking rates, but again, in a risk off environment, you would have to expect um, the dollar, the US dollar, to actually do better than the Australian dollar. This will you know, it's likely to turn around if again China starts to grow and um, you know the risk risk is off. Um, sorry, risk is uh, becomes more on than off. So, uh, but again, not really a pair that I'm looking to trade right now. I do think if prices do pull back and we do get some you know really positive data and you know global sentiment starts to shift positive, then I do think that this area, this uh, 67 cent zone, is going to be a very nice buy. Uh, from an Australian dollar perspective. Um, Aussie Yen, again, we've had a decent pullback on the daily. We did get a bounce from last week. We are saying that last week that, you know, that was last week, uh, I think it was Friday, and we did get a move to the upside, but obviously, you know, uh, um, prices didn't uh, make higher highs, unfortunately. And uh, with the RBA looking to high crates this week, we could see prices actually come down to this zone here before moving to the upside. So I do think that this zone here, the one, the the ninety one fifties, is a decent zone to look for um, buyers. I haven't changed my bias on the Australian dollar, um, so I'm looking for any kind of pullbacks to look for long trades. Um, moving on to actually, if you do want to get short on the um, and buy the Japanese yen, then. Um, you're looking at a pullback to uh, the 95 areas and looking for a short trade around there. And finally, gold. So gold um, obviously benefiting from uh, dollar weakness. And um, as I said last week, if you go back to last week's uh, report and video, I was saying that this is going to be a decent area to look for uh, some long trades as smart money have been literally buying on the way down, getting cheaper and cheaper. And really the trigger has been the um, the uh, the dollar uh, surprising to the downside, right? So if you start to look at uh, this level here, I still think that uh, I, I really want, because the reason why I didn't buy, the, buy gold, I was looking for actually a better price just below that. And um, because I'm not really a fan of buying at levels that have been touched several times, I'm really not, it's because it's very obvious. So um, when a level is very obvious like that, I tend not to you know, buy like everybody else. But what I will do, um, as price starts to prove itself to the upside, I think it is worth you know, maybe trying to start to scale in um, because I think that the, the upside for the dollar is capped, um, which means that the downside for gold should be capped, right? So any kind of pullbacks down to this zone here, um, and even if it comes down into that zone now, I think I'm gonna have to have, I might just start to buy, but I have a wider stop on gold um, and look for some upside because if there is a global recession, which it does look like, um, you know, we're, we're seeing it in the UK, we're seeing it in Europe, and potentially in uh, the US, you know, by the end of the year into you know the beginning of next year, then gold should be you know the uh, the buy right as well as um, uh, interest rates not being hiked as much, and in fact the interest rate hiking cycle coming to an end. So gold could start to shine again, um, but I do think any kind of pullbacks are going to be decent uh, buys overall. Um, and that's really my bias. If you're looking for a sell trade, then pretty much um, you would have been caught on the wrong side of that. And uh, you're looking at, I think sell trades are gonna be at the 1810 area, um, 1807 to 1814 is your first area to look for any kind of sell trade. You've got quite a wide zone of supply, which is gonna come really up to uh, the highs there. But um, but that's pretty much it for now. So my bias is to buy gold any on 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 pullbacks. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Um, again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, take care. And I'll speak to you uh, whenever I uh, guess make another video. Take care, guys. Have a great trading week.